Hello everyone and welcome to the NCSY Alumni YouTube channel. My name is Yosef Ginsberg and I'm privileged to be the co-director of NCSY Israel. This week's a really interesting Parsha. This week, Parsha's Tetzave talks about many different things that went on in the Beis HaMikdash, many different things, specific things, whether it's the menorah or many other things, but one specific thing stands, stands out in my mind every single year, and that's the clothing. The clothing that the priests were commanded to wear, the Kohanim were commanded to wear in the Beis HaMikdash. I'm zochar to be sitting here in the old city, 500 meters away from, from where this all took place. And so it hits me even more in this specific place, in the old city of Yerushalayim. And it reminds me of a story, a story that bothered me for a long time. A story about an old Rebbe, Rabbi Shrom Merzhin, in the late 1800s. There was a Rebbe named Rabbi Shrom Merzhin, and he was known for his splendor. He dressed like a king. Silver, gold, golden buttons, jewels, everything. A golden carriage. Very specific about his clothing. And there's one story as there are many, but there's one specific story that stands out in my mind, that there was once a young student of his sitting next to him at a tish, a tish with hundreds, hundreds of Hasidim, of students who came out from all over southern Galicia, northern Galicia, and Poland, and Ukraine, and you name it, all of Europe. They all came out to see him. But this young guy managed to get the best seat in the house, and he's sitting right next to Rabbi Shraul Meirjian. And he accidentally, from his cup of water, drops a drop of water on the bekasha, on the clothing of Rabbi Yisrael Meir Jin. Rabbi Yisrael Meir Jin reacts as if a giant boulder had just dropped on him, as if he was in so much pain, something bothered him so much. The student didn't know what to do. He apologized. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. The originator looks at him and he says, he says, a pagam, a stain, a stain on your clothing, that's like a stain on your neshama. And I never understood what this meant. It always bothered me. Now back to our Parsha. The Parsha says in Pasuk Bet, Vasita big day kodesh la'aron achicha lechavoru letifaras. And you shall make holy clothing for Aaron, your brother, the Kohen Gadol, the, great, the greatest of the priests where priests come from. And why should you do it? How should you do it? Lechavod ulitifaret. For honor and for splendor. Strange. We know that the Torah doesn't have any extra words. Nothing is added. Nothing is, nothing is for no reason. So why lechavod ulitifaret? And why make clothing in general? Why do they need special clothing? Clothing may, I don't know. Why do they need special clothing? So the Malbim comes here and helps us out. He says that what it means, the Pasuk, when it says lechavod lutifaris, are two different things, honor and splendor. He says first there's honor, and honor is what you get for who you are. What you get for your God-given talents, your God-given ab God abilities, things that come to you easily. You happen to be smart, that's an honor. You happen to come from a famous family, that's an honor. It's a God-given talent, not something you worked for. A king comes from his father, usually it's a hierarchy, that's an honor. And then there's Tifarat, which is splendor. Something says the Malbim that comes to you through hard work. So there's make these holy clothing, these specific clothing, for two reasons for the Kohanim, for the priests. One, because I chose them and they're my sons. And the second reason, because they're going to work for it. They're gonna to have to know that they're gonna work for it. That clothing is not gonna be nothing. And I'm gonna come back to this. There's another story of the Rishoner, another story of the Rishoner. The Zlatapala Rebbe was once passing through, he had a wedding in Rishin of, of, of his son and he wanted to go to the Rebbe to get a bracha. And he went to the Rishoner. 
And he went for a bracha, and the Rishner saw that he had a, a brand new three-piece suit on, a vest with a jacket over it. And he looked upset. He said, where I come from, the Pneumius and the Chitzonius aren't any different. The inside, what's inside and what's on the outside isn't any different. You understand that the clothing that needs to be worn can't just be clothing on your body, but it needs to be something that represents you from inside. We all know how to cover up, how to look something, but what's on the inside needs to match what's going on on the outside. I'll finish off with one, one more Torah, and that's from the Ole Yaakov of Husyatin, who was in Tel Aviv, the Admor of Husyatin, the Husyatin Rebbe, and he said, Rechov Bialik in Tel Aviv, in the 1940s, he said this story, he said that it connects to a Gemara, there's a Gemara in Zvachim, that asks a great question. Now, the portion after it talks about clothing, in this portion of the Torah, in this week's parasha, it speaks about the Karbanos. So the Gemara asks, what's the connection? It's, it's, it's not random, this order. Why is the, the portion of clothing of the Kohanim connected to the Karbanos, to the sacrifices that the, Kor, that the Kohanim should bring? And it says the answer that just like, just like Karbanos, just like sacrifices are Mechaper, take away our sins, so too, the clothing takes away our sins. Meaning, and the Gemara goes on, and the Husiatner goes on to explain how each part of what the Kohen wears represents something wrong that we did that it's trying to fix. For example, the Avnate, which was the belt that the Kohen wore, so that was representative of taking away all the bad thoughts that we had, because it separates from the head and the rest of the body. And each thing that we wear needs to represent something that goes in. So just to finish off, what the original was telling us, and what we need to realize, is that what, what's, what's going on, on on the outside of our bodies, we all like to dress up, it's Adar now, it's a time for dressing up, but what happens on the outside what we wear on the outside needs to reflect of what's going on inside. It's not enough to just be a Kohen. We know that a Kohen can bring a Karban. But if a Kohen brings a sacrifice, a Karban, and doesn't have the right thoughts, doesn't have the right Kavana, the Karban isn't good. It's not, it's not, it doesn't go through. The sacrifice isn't complete. Just like in Rajin, I give all of us a bracha that what goes on on the outside should reflect what's going on on the inside. And God willing, we should all be 500 meters away from where we are this coming Shabbat in the Beit HaMikdash. Everyone should have a Shabbat Shalom. And don't forget to subscribe.